I'm an autism awareness angel, making sure my wings protect the different, the stranger than. I'm an autism awareness angel, it's good, cause I'm cool with the unique behavior. I'm an autism awareness angel, will you accept me? Cause I accept you. I'm an autism awareness angel, cause the view from the spectrum is a better point of view. Happy New Year's everyone and I hope you've all had a wonderful celebratory night last night and that today you are feeling invigorated to start 2016 with a bang. I hope this year brings you everything you've wished for and more and that the New Year's resolution you made will be triumphant. I'm Tally and today on Autism 30 we are speaking with Lucas Gates. Mr. Lucas Gates established Rain City Wolves FC, emceed the Knights of Remember Gala, which is held in June in Vancouver, British Columbia, for young adults with special needs, and is a webmaster for Soccer Dog CA, and he's an avid gamer and very tech savvy. Luke is 23 years old and was diagnosed with autism at the age of five in the year 1996 when the autism rates in society was one in 1500. Now it's one in 68, which is a dramatic increase. The reason why I'm mentioning that fact is because in comparison to present day, in that time when Lucas was a child, there were fewer resources and access to information about autism was very limited. However, his dedicated parents educated themselves and truly devoted their lives to making sure that Lucas would have the best start to adulthood, as will be evident in this podcast. We also want you to be aware of the fact that many in prior podcasts have made that if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. And today, we want you to meet one wonderful person with autism who has a lot to tell us about his journey. And we are so pleased that he is speaking with us today. Welcome, Luke. Hi, Tally. Thanks for having me. And also, Happy New Year to all everyone listening to the podcast. And I hope everyone's 2016 is a remarkable one. Thank you. That's really sweet. Oh, and we also do want to mention that Lucas's mother and his beautiful and younger sister, Sadie, is also with us in studio. Hi. Now, parents really want to know, what was your childhood like? It was a good one. It was a good, very good one. Like, I grew up in a very happy uh, household. Obviously. <laughs> well, my parents sure made my life really enjoyable. I just grew up being, a, just tried to be, tried to be with everyone else. Now, what fond memories do you have of childhood? Are there any that stick out, any in particular? There was a few. There's one like I, you know, I remember in our old house before we moved to the one we have now. I used to, we used to always do this. Uh, we always used to have in the garage this thing we called Club Gates. We always used to have all the cousins come by. We used to always play and all that kind of stuff. We always used to always do the, this Pac-Man machine. Oh, memories. Oh, Pac-Man. Yes, I remember that game. Yeah, and well. unfortunately that machine ended up being, uh, <laughs> ended up machine getting molded, which is kind of, well, I guess it happens. Now, um, so what was school like then? Um, I definitely think it's a mixture. Like, elementary was great. Like, I had TAs, which were one of the nicest people ever. Yeah, but like, one of the, here's the funny thing. One of the TAs that I had in, in elementary... Her son is actually a really good friend of mine. We actually ended up becoming good friends. and oh, That's great. But unfortunately, he's been really busy with business, so I can't really have much time to talk to him. Although I can hit him up on gaming now and then. Now, now what about high school? Ugh, high school. Ooh, that was a one that didn't really work out. I seem to hit on a sore spot. <laughs> yeah, well, that, it wasn't great. Well, I had teacher aides, which were sort of not really adequate for the job. Okay, that's one way of putting it. And why would you say that? Because, uh, unfortunately, I had one TA who shut up, shut up to me five times in, high, in, in my first year of high school, like in the first week. Isn't that completely inappropriate to Barry. speak to And then someone? guess what happened to him? He got kicked out of the school board. And, unfortunately, he's now in the Richmond school board. God help those kids. Oh, so do they moved them about? I wasn't aware they did that. I just want to chime in, too, about the teacher's aides. Um, when Lucas said they just get transferred from one school to another, it's so true. You can, um, this particular person he's talking about, I mean, thank goodness that we had um, 
um, somebody that heard this this guy talking to Lucas in such a horrific way, not just calling him to sh- shut up, but just being very, very verbally abusive to, abusive to Lucas. So he did get transferred to another school. To get fired as a TA, it is almost impossible. I can't even imagine what the TA would have to do to be fired through the Vancouver School Board. It is, but, it's un, I've never heard one being fired. So as many times as, as you complain and as many witnesses as you get, they get transferred from one school to another. That's, I just had to chime in on that one. And also after, after that guy was uh, got in the boot, uh, apparently I had another guy who was not really that great either. What made him inadequate? Apparently he won. He slept. He slept for most of the most of the classes, and he wasn't exactly uh, in, involved. He was just not really great. And just to let you know, most of the teacher aides they hire in high school these days are just not adequate. And also remember, in grade twelve, when Lucas was getting prepared, and we were preparing him to go off to his first year of college, this particular teacher aide that he's talking about told Lucas that he will never ever be able to do anything on his own in. Um, this in Langara College, the college we are looking into, and it's just a pipe dream. So, and uh, why bother? Why bother even going to college? You'll never be able to do. It was so negative that the um, um, the, the gift I gave him at the very end of the year was a book that was all about autism, and I did not sign up. Love Abby Gates. It was, definitely said something else and I told Lucas as soon as you give him the gift you run like heck and come to the car because I was I couldn't say anything all year long but yes. those words it, and it was, they weren't even really swear words they were just like you read this book this is this shame on you just well, shame on I you I also want to I also want to mention however there was some good lights in the in high school I actually have to admit the best thing about my high school career was my counselor oh, she was amazing and you know what the thing though is when I went on the graduation she cried my name out a little bit, and then I gave her the biggest hug, and I said, thank you for everything. That's sweet. Now, what made her so wonderful? She was just, she was really down the earth. Like, normally, normally, account, normally counselors are just say, okay, let's just get your course selection. She was really knows, it's just strange. Like, she knew, like, a lot about me. I was, I wouldn't say, but I think I might have, I don't want to be biased, but I think I might have been her favorite school, <laughs> uh, in cl- in, like, student in all of my school. Also, um, I was called into the school a lot because there were problems because Lucas would dart out of classes because it just became too much for him. And when I would sit down with this particular counselor who was just like a, like a savior, um, she would always say to me, Abby, it's no big deal. Tomorrow's tomorrow, yes. and we'll get through it. It is no big deal. He's not harmed. He's, uh, he's well. He's got his health, and we'll get through this. It is no big deal. But the teacher's assistants would make me feel like we are so failing on this academically no problem no problem but handling sitting in a very small classroom 30 kids noises everywhere it was so difficult but this counselor was a blessing oh my goodness she just made life those five years um durable isn't it just wonderful oh. when you meet people, one, that have actual knowledge about what autism is and they actually have a great understanding Definitely. about De- how to deal with um, students and actually understand where they're coming from? Because I find often the situation that you're talking about really comes from sheer ignorance. I mean, myself as a teacher, I've taught students um, who, who do have special needs and I've taught students that are very academically gifted and I, and I find everybody has their own gifts, but not one of my 20 years of teaching have I ever told a student, regardless of their background, regardless of their ability, that they don't have the ability to succeed in life. I think that that you've had that experience is appalling mm-hmm. to me as a teacher mm-hmm. and really not a good representation of good education. I yeah. also I also want to I also want to mention that I actually um, when I was uh, coming home coming from school at the time I went to I went to I actually was just on my way to visit my mom and I just decided you know what. I'm going to visit my counselor because I'm in the neighborhood. And she was so glad to see me. I just told her, thank, thank you for everything. I also just asked for a business card because I'm working on the soccer team, like you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. Absolutely. Now, what would you like your teachers, your fellow students, and educational assistants to know about working with a student with autism? Just to understand them and make them feel welcome. Like, the thing, I'm not bashing the, what the, the school, like the school thing is going on. Like, there needs to be a little more uh, education into autism. It's unfortunate that most of these days, uh, they just need more education because the teacher aides in the school system are just not willing to do anything. They're just not willing. Like, I'm just baffled at how the school system is. If I had a kid down the road, 
I would never put them for the public school system. It's just a nightmare. And it's going to only get worse. Now, speaking about other aspects of society, what do you want the others in society to know about people with autism? Something you've always wanted to let others know to clear up any ignorance that others may currently have that you want rectified. I just want people to welcome uh, people with autism as a whole. I know we, we look like regular people because of our appearance. Like, I know my sister has uh, Down syndrome, which is very visible. But I just, whenever I have like a meltdown or something, it's very uncommon these days, but in the past... All these people were looking like me like in a very weird way. Yes. And then uh, then they just stare at me like blank stare. I just felt really insulted. I just was like, what's your problem? And then they just turned away and walked away. I was like, what's their beef? Like they really need to know that people with autism are different, but we're not exactly that different. We're like everyone else. Yeah. And how does that make you feel when somebody looks at you or reacts to you in what I consider a very disrespectful manner? I'm insulted. I just don't feel people who uh, deserve uh, people uh, who uh, look at people. It doesn't matter if it's a reg- if it's like a little kid who doesn't have autism is blowing up. It's it's not a, their problem. They should just not look and walk away. Like autism and pe- like you can think of autism like every time like when you see a kid like blowing up. It's like you can think of it as another ki- like a little kid who's having like a tantrum. Just let him be. Don't give him a blank stare. I've seen everyone who does that. Mind your own business. Now, now, the question that I want to have that I want rectified too is, when you've gone through those tantrums in public, I want the audience also to understand, what are you going through at that moment? My, I just, I, I've, honestly, I've been telling my mom this all the time. It's like I have a blank, like my mind just goes completely blank. I just can't think of anything. When I, when I have a, like today I might have a meltdown now and then, but it's very rare. Now, the, I know uh, from a technical term, they call that sensory overload. Yeah, but I just, I usually call it, a, I usually bring it down the layman's term. Like I call it yes. kerfuffle, like is a very strong word to use. Well, I usually, my mind just goes completely blank and I don't realize it until afterwards. It's so weird. I don't know if science can even think about that. It's just the weirdest thing. And, I don't, and then afterwards, I just have to come down to earth and I have to apologize, apologize, apologize. It's not fun. It's All he does is apologize. That's I, and, and I remember once a psychiatrist, when I used to see a psychiatrist for many years for Lucas, um, it was just me seeing him and asking him questions, not Lucas seeing him. Um, he would say to me, he is going to apologize to you forever, forever. And I'm like, well, why? And he goes, because he, when he's in this m- moment of his kerfuffle or his meltdown, he can't help it, but he knows, he knows outside of it, outside of it it's not this is not appropriate I shouldn't be doing this but there's something in him that can't turn that switch off like even now when if he, if, if he were like even today shopping it was so noisy in this department store but he didn't have a kerfuffle or anything but he just said I gotta get out of here I just gotta get out mm-hmm. of here so my husband took him one way and he wasn't no you wouldn't stare at him mm-hmm. but I could see by, I can walk, I can see Lucas coming and I can tell by the look on his face that there is something wrong. It's not just a a grumpy look. It's a look like he's going to have a meltdown or he's got to get the heck out of here. Something is just so much overload on him that let it out. Just get away. Now, I really want people to understand this concept. If somebody was in a wheelchair and every two seconds they had to say, sorry for not being able to Mm. walk or sorry for not doing something... I want you to understand what that does to a person I because I know. they can't control can it. it and I really want the public to understand that concept of how odd it would be for somebody in a wheelchair to apologize. They, and the thing that like I know like every time I see this like I'm always like I'm always thinking not about me but I also think like other people in special needs like people who have Tourette's, uh, Down syndrome, all this all this uh there's so this special needs community is huge. It's like it could be its own universe for darn. It could be its own universe. Absolutely, and I it's definitely, I definitely, res- whenever I see someone who has a, a special needs, or I can tell, I just give them. Whenever I'm walking by, I give them a nod to tell him, to tell them I'm, I'm on board with them and everything. So, Lucas, what would make your life easier for you? Hmm, that could be a tough egg to crack. Hmm. So basically, the thing though that really worries me about is how the the work the workforce, because I am of age, like I'm, I'm already, in, I'm already in my twenties, which means I'm. I'm already at the point where I'm in, I'm in, and the point where I'm old, like I'm getting into the workforce. That really scares me. Why does that scare you? Because it's just intimidating. It's very intimidating to, to be looking at this because there's, look, 
Most of the people that are retiring now, there's a huge, huge gap that's gonna be avoided. And they want us, the Generation Xers and the Millennials to jump in. For me, being with have Asperger's, that's a huge shoes, bunch of shoes to fill. But you're very gifted with technology and you're very tech savvy. Yeah, it's just life at this point, I feel is great. I'm just still um, harnessing my talent. I'm just not there yet, but I'm definitely on my way. What do you love about having autism? And if you could, would you get rid of your diagnosis? The thing, though, is I've been thinking about this for years. I even told my Facebook friends about this. Sometimes I think autism is a blessing and a curse. because In one, what way? You can think autism as a blessing because you, you're totally mentally gifted. Like some, I've seen people who are on, like on the spectrum. Like I don't know if it's like Bill Gates or the creator of Pokemon, Sato- Satoshi Tajiri. Like all these guys. And Charles I, Schultz and a ton of others. Yes. Yes. But also I think autism is a curse because I sometimes when I have a meltdown, a meltdown or sometimes in the medical world they call it sensory overload, it just is, it's kind of unbearable. In what way unbearable? Unbearable in like um, sometimes I just blow up. Um, sometimes I have a kerfuffle is what, we, what I call it. Yes. And, um, and basically I'm uncontrollable until I calm down, which my me- mind is uh, like a mental blank. Like my mind just goes, just clicks off. Now, Lucas, what do you hope for for others with autism and the autism community? Brighter days are looking good because the fact is people are knowing more about the diag- diagnosis now. Like when I was a kid, like people didn't know what autism was. You can think of it sort of like the uh, Steve Martin when he used to say hamburger because, because it was like hamburger. Like, because <laughs> yes, people didn't know, th- didn't, didn't know what it was because he, it's like a mistranslation. It's like you're talking like uh, French or... Uh, you know, like French or Spanish, you don't know what it is. Now yes. everyone knows what Asperger is, autism, the whole spectrum everyone knows. I wish more people would know, but you are correct. More people are beginning to be aware of about autism. And also, and also one thing is people are becoming more aware on transit, which is huge. Like I know people use handy, um, like, our, like our specialized bus system here in Vancouver. Everyone like is pretty much open to this the diagnosis. Even they're talking about mental health awareness, which is huge. I love hearing about this. Now, Abby, what do you hope for for the others with autism and the autism community? Um, well, I hope that, um, well, I know that there's gonna, there's more education now for teachers and SEAs, because I know on professional days, they always have um, speakers and key, there's so many, so much going on for autism with our new autism center opening up in, in Richmond. It's a blessing in disguise. Um, I, I think people are just more aware of autism now because when Lucas was younger, it was like one in fifteen hundred. Now it's one in six. It's every everywhere you go, you know, there's a classroom with a child with autism, one or two. Now, Lucas, myself as a parent, and I know many parents want to know, what do you want to tell parents who have a child with autism? Like I've uh, like I've told other people who have who, have, who I have uh, talked to. I've talked to parents about this before. Don't worry, it's all right. You know, like for me, I was basically non I was basically nonverbal for the first few years of my life. I didn't talk to anyone face to face. Guess what happened? I learned how to talk face to face, and like I'm talking, I'm like articulate, like right now. Yes, you are very articulate. So, approximately, what age did you start to speak? Hmm, that might that might be a bit of a t- um might be a tough question to ask. I would assume five. Like I'm just. I'm hundred percent sure. I that maybe was, I'll get to your mother for that. Yeah, that one. Would it be. was around five because I remember around five we were. That's when you were diagnosed because we needed um, something because he was going into grade one and I knew we absolutely needed assistance and so we just saw uh, a psychologist and she diagnosed him. But I think his first few words were around five, five and a half because I remember counting them on one hand. And it was like, oh, thank you, God, like one word, two words, three words. It wasn't mama, dada. We didn't care about that. We just wanted <laughs> any word, any word. And then it just, he's so articulate now. He um, Very. Now, how did he get there? Because he's very articulate and, and not being able to speak at five well it must have been through gaming and the computer because he had no speech therapy we tried but they quit um uh he used to love reading um all his gaming books 
so many computer books he would sit and read. Um, he followed people like Steve Jobs and all these brilliant men. He followed everything about them. He used to love looking, Googling everything. We thought, we we make a joke in our family. We should have named Lucas Lucas Google Gates because he <laughs> Googles everything. All his cousins say to him, how does he know this Auntie Abby? And it's like, because he looks up everything. So He's, was he looking stuff up? Sorry, Lucas, were you looking stuff up on the computer just, before just, you were talking? I think, uh, yeah. My mom said that Lucas was reading. He would read signs. I don't remember this because there was just so much going on with mm-hmm. Lucas and having Sadie too. There was just so much going on that my mom said when we used to drive down, drive, drive anywhere, Lucas would be reading all the billboards, all the street signs, but couldn't still talk, like put three oh, words my together. my son was doing the exact same thing, yes. Yeah. I don't really remember that, but my, my mom absolutely remembers that. And it just got better over time. I guess, time. I'm, and I'm, honestly, I still think, um, I don't know how I got this ad living. Oh, and another humongous thing that sort of opened the door with Lucas was my social stories. I used oh. to yes. make hundreds of social stories Now, for you Lucas. mentioned social stories. Can you please explain in detail what a social story is? Because Absolutely. some people out there might not know. Okay, what a social story is, it's for a person who's visual. Like a person like Lucas and most kids that are on the autism spectrum are very visual learners. So if I was standing in the front of a classroom talking to Lucas, it would sound like the Peanuts character teacher. But if I drew out pictures for Lucas okay and what this is what I would do just I'm not an artist it was stick man all the time I would draw a little stick man make show it as Lucas draw a stick another stick person me and getting dressed in the morning page the next page um sitting down having breakfast the next page getting in the truck as as whatever the steps were for that day that would be my social story I had hundreds of them and I would keep a pad of paper and a pen in my car all the time in my purse because whatever situation was coming I knew I'd have to make a really quick social story because if I were to say to Lucas oh my god we got to go just to this store first that would make no sense to him if I drew a picture and wrote down the name of the store he would get it and that's immediately. really excellent advice to any parents out there who are thinking about ways to communicate with their child oh. When I went to this this talk and this woman mentioned social stories and she put it up on a big screen, I couldn't wait to get home and make a social story. He was in bed. I stayed up all night making so many social stories um, for the situations that, that I knew that were going to be happening the next day. And as soon as Lucas woke up, I sat on his bed and just showed him. And it was like the light went on. It was a, like Oprah would say, it was a light bulb moment <laughs> for all of us. Bing. For, yep. It was a bing, big time. Uh, that sounds great. Yep. Now, what are you currently involved in, Lucas? Uh, in what in what context? Well, what I, I know you're really busy, so I'd like to inform the our audience about activities you're in, your your schooling, what jobs you have. Right now, I'm kind of taking a hiatus from school just to, because I've been in school for five years now. It gotta be a bit. It got a bit much. School can be a bit much. Um, people on the off the autism spectrum can admit admit that too. It's <laughs> all awesome. good. It's all good. He's working full time. It's very physical. It's very, uh, he's done all the computer work. And we're, I'm just so thrilled because I see such a happy and calm and relaxed person. And this to me is worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. You know what? The anxieties were, and I'm not going to start medicating Lucas and out of vanning up. And, uh-uh. No, absolutely not. So this is the happiest Lucas has been in so long. I haven't felt, I, I've probably felt the best I've ever been. Like, I'm totally, like, I'm I'm totally laid back now I'm feeling a lot more like mentally up like m- the mentally down if you can sort of get that in context yes no absolutely and and aside from work what other activities because I know you definitely are one of the leaders in the soccer field here so what would you like our oh, audience actually, to know I'm, about I'm, that I'm, so basically I work with a, a soccer team that my mom and my mom created well, I'm, I'm actually one of the people who run another division within the team. And during d- before the team actually created, mm-hmm. that I created within the division, within the organization, I met a lot of new friends during this. Like, I remember this kid who has uh, CP, or cerebral palsy, for anyone who doesn't know. He used to always come up to me and give me the biggest hugs, like, no way, I don't want a hug. And he used to always <laughs> cry and that kind of stuff. But Aww. here's the weird thing. Me and him became easily the best friends. Like... We, don't, we have these uh, five um, f- uh, Friday guys that uh, hang out or something. We usually like to go bowling or just do guy stuff. And then we all come back here and we all just 
game out to our heart's content. It is a blast. Which is great. And because we're all, we're, nowadays, most of the most you hear about video games is all nothing but good. Absolutely. Now, I know with soccer, you, you also make a lot of decisions that happen within the, each division. You actually have a lot of ideas I, regarding that. I do as have well. a lot of ideas, but mostly my ideas uh, come from the th- division I created because I usually leave the division that my mom created, those two divisions beforehand. Yes. I usually leave that to, the com- to her committee. And also, here's another little tidbit. I'm also uh, I'm also doing emceeing for a gala we uh, that we my mom and a few other people created. It's for people young like young adults with people with autism with special needs. Anybody like anybody can come. It's a great event. I'm actually the one who speaks it uh, speaks during the whole night. People love it. Like you can definitely tell I'm that that kind of guy. Listen to this. Welcome to Night Tour Member Five. <laughs> like you can get you can sort of get that you can sort of get that idea. Well, we call our event the Night Tour Member. It's and what a, happens at that event? Well, we what we do is we usually let the kids come. We usually let the, the the kids come have a fun time. Here's the best kicker: parents, bye bye. So oh, they, parents aren't invited. I see. Yep, the parents go into another room where uh, all that kind of stuff is and just watch TV while the kids just dance away to like like all sorts of jams. And also, my sister also has her own band playing that night. Ooh, what a blast. And I have to also brag that over the five years, all the fundraising I've done, we've been able to give away 130 iPads as door prizes. That's so that's fantastic. pretty awesome. Yeah, well it's a pretty done. it's a pretty crazy. And we uh, we're actually thinking we're actually considering that idea again, but it's not technically final, but you never know. So this event happens in June. June. We actually uh, what we do is we usually elect to take this is on a Friday night, like the, like around the middle of June. What we do is we usually, during our soccer season, we usually we always usually cancel one week out because it's a Friday night. Saturday is when we have soccer. We usually just kick that week off. We call it a we call it like a how do I explain it? We just cancel the week and then okay. and then people people come Friday night. It's a literal blast. Here's the weird thing. I don't know if I've heard any other people doing these kind of events. Like I know there might be in the United States, but I have not heard of one in Canada. This is we might be the first ones. I'm not bragging, but I don't know if there's <laughs> any other ones out there. I'd love to hear other events out. out And can I just also say the reason when the Down Center Research Foundation came to me and they asked me, you know, would you like to put on a little party for a few people with special needs? And I sat back and I thought, you know what? Lucas was not able to go to his prom. He was just couldn't. He was too anxious. There's absolutely no way. And I'm sure there's so many other people that can't go to their graduation. Why don't we make this a freaking massive graduation, beautiful prom? So I went to the owners at the Century Plaza because their son just happens to play on our soccer team. Yes. And she opened us, oh my God, open arms, gave us like the world and back. And that's where we have it down at their hotel, the Century Plaza downtown. Thank you. So, and and oh I God. and I will have information on my webpage uh, around the time of June so that it sells you, out every year it sells out we have the sellout is pretty dang quick mm-hmm. but the, but the uh, we don't have a definite date as of this broadcast maybe we might have a date but usually we would announce this kind of detail in february but we don't have an idea yet but we are aiming for june middle of june next uh, in 2016 that sounds great, and I hope to have that information so maybe I can post it on my webpage as well. Yeah, but now, what are your future goals? Simply put, being the technology sector, it's a hot industry. That's for certain true, and, and you're very tech savvy, and I'm sure you'll be very successful in that field. And also one thing I'm very savvy about is listening to all the tech news that's currently, like the trends that come in and out, and then what trends uh, basically are here to stay, like. Like, you know, like there's so many trends, like I know people are like, ah, like so many technology, so many devices like your eye and like your dev- like your smartphone or your tablet become obsolete basically overnight. Yes. Basically, you have to keep up with the trends. And I'm very good at that. Yes. And, and because we're running out of time, yeah. I just want to ask you in your own words, what would you like the world to know about autism? It's something, you know, I just want people to know that autism isn't the worst thing. It's obviously something that people are worried about, but please open your arms. It's it's not it's not something bad. It's something good. Like I know there's pros and cons to everything, but please, autism is a good thing sometimes. And you know, like for me, you would never tell I had autism. When I'm when I'm looking around, people people don't they don't look at me strange anymore. They look I'm like someone else. Like the only time I usually say about that is usually when I'm talking to them, and they're like, "Wow." I can't believe you're autistic. Like, they don't even know that. It's just That's weird. true. 
Now, um, I want to thank Lucas and his family for being with us and sharing his story with us today. We also want to remind you to subscribe and join our mailing list to receive information about upcoming podcasts and information. And if you are listening to us on iTunes, don't forget to write a review and like us and join us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google+. And don't forget to send in your questions if you want to ask our parent panel or myself questions. Questions, please send us an email and we'd love to address and answer them. If you want to contact Lucas, all of his details will be on our webpage at autism30.com. Once again, Happy New Year's and thank you, our podcast audience, for joining us. Today, until next time, this is Tally telling you to live in love. Hey, yo, I'm an autism awareness angel, making sure my wings protect the different. better point of view.